I've been thinking about upgrading to the Cuddy Black. Is it a good cargo ship? Is it a good fighter? Welcome to another installment of A Star Citizen Ship Buyer's Guide. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here again and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass Black with a comparison on how those features rank amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. Let me know what ship you'd like to see next down in the comments. The ship with the most upvotes will be featured in a future episode. With that out of the way, let's get to it. The Drake Cutlass Black is a medium-sized cargo fighter ship with a low-cost and easy-to-maintain solution for local in-system militia units. It is manufactured by Drake Interplanetary. Their ships have a characteristic of having a robust and geometrical design with a lot of low-cost materials. Drake ships do not feature an ejection system as it is too costly. The Cutlass Black is part of three Cutlass variants. The Cutlass Blue and Red are not flight ready as a 3.4. The Cutlass Black is currently flight ready and is available standalone for $100. It is also included in a $115 game package and part of the Loot and Scoop package with the Drake Dragonfly for $150. It is available on the gray market for around $118 and can be found at Teach's Tech Shop at Levski for a little over $1.5 million. With that out of the way, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have handpicked 17 ships that I think could possibly be considered by someone looking to purchase a Cutlass Black. I have included some fighter ships under $100, but no huge cargo ships like the Drake Caterpillar. The following slides will feature the current ship's value and rank along with the names and values of the worst and best ships. A Google Sheets document with those values and ships are linked in the description. Now let's see how it stacks up against the competition. The Cutlass Black comes in at around 180,000 kilograms. It has a max crew size of three, a decent cargo capacity of 46 SCU. For a cargo ship, its max yaw pitch rate of 90 degrees per second is very nimble, an SCM speed of 220 meters per second, a decently fast 1,115 meters per second top speed, has almost 3,900 hit points across its body, its shield generators can withstand almost 7,300 hit points of damage, its guns do just over 1,200 damage per second, and they have a theoretical DPS of almost 2,000. It should be noted that the DPS only matters if you can hit your target. It has a total missile damage of almost 17,600, and its fuel tanks can hold up to 15,000 gallons of fuel. Its Odyssey Quantum Drive gives it a great 74 megameters per second quantum speed and a range of 107 gigameters. So it can travel from Port Alizar to Hurston 3.3 times before needing to refuel. Quantum travel from Port Alizar to Hurston will take you about 7 minutes and 14 seconds, and leaving Hurston's atmosphere will take you about 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Now let's talk about its firepower. The Cutlass Black packs two Verapuk S3 gimbal mounts with one Scorpion GT215s each. And these Scorpion GT215s have 300 DPS and a 1200 meter range. In addition, it has another pair of Verapuk S3 gimbal mounts with one CF227 Badger laser repeater each. These Badger laser repeaters do 260 DPS and have over an 1800 meter range. In the rear, the Cutlass has one man turret with two size 3 CF337 Panther laser repeaters. These Panther laser repeaters pack over 400 DPS and just over 2400 meters in range. In addition, its missile bays hold four size 4 MSD-423 missile racks with two size 3 Arrestor 3s each, and two MSD-442 missile racks with four Tempest 2s each for a total of 12 missiles. Let's talk about components. The standard components available on the Cutlass Black are as follows. It has one size 2 grade C civilian class daybreak power plant, two size 2 grade C civilian class cold snap coolers, one size 2 grade C civilian class Odyssey quantum drive with an 18 second cooldown after long jumps, and last but not least we have one size 2 grade C civilian class stop shield generator. Let's take a look at the interior. The Drake Cutlass Black features a large cargo bay big enough to comfortably fit at least two Grey Cat PTVs, a Drake Dragonfly, and a Open Knox, a Cyclone, or 46 SCU in the rear. Fun fact, if you purchase cargo in the Cutlass Black with a Cyclone in the rear, 
you will have six SCU in the rear and one SCU in the back of the Cyclone. Hashtag mind blown. Upon entering through the rear of the cargo hold, you will see six passenger seats. Above those are unlabeled component housings. Hopefully the Cutlass will get a design update that will allow us to know what these components are for. To the right and to the left are two side cargo doors. Moving on, we have more unmarked component housings to the left. And on the right, we have four functional weapon racks where you can store weapons. And we have two bunk beds to log out in. In the middle of the cutlass, we have the turret access port. The cockpit features a co-pilot seat with four MFDs and a radar. And the pilot seat comes with six MFDs and a radar. In closing, the Drake Cutlass Black is a great medium-sized cargo ship and an okay fighter. Its pros are a good-sized 48 SCU cargo capacity, it's really nimble for its size, has a fast quantum travel, lots of hard points for weapons, and a huge missile payload. Its cons are it's made of paper, its cockpit is very loud, and has no ejection feature. So is it worth a buy? With the $50 upgrade from the Aegis Avenger Titan for six times more cargo capacity, it's a no-brainer for the citizen interested in a profession in trading. However, if you are looking for a fighter, your money is best spent elsewhere. But ultimately, that's up to you. Did you like this guide? Like it. Subscribe by hitting the bell and comment what ship you'd like to see featured in the next episode of A Star Citizenship Buyer's Guide. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.